Hi, I'm Dave Ingebretson, and once again, Leroy Hyatt and I would like to welcome you to another edition of Fly Tying, the Angler's Art. Again, we've got a variety of things to tie for him tonight, Leroy. We're going mm -hmm. to start on the uh, peacock, peacock caddis dry. Mm -hmm. We're going to tie the Moose River bucktail streamer, and then we're going to go to a panfish fly, the sinking spider. Right. Okay, why don't you show All us right. how to get started? The peacock caddis, I'll use an a, uh, 8 aught black tying thread, and again, where the fly gets its name, the peacock, the caddis, we're taking the uh, uh, elk hair to make the wing, and then we'll mix brown and grizzly together. Now I have a size 12 hook in the vise. The barb has already been pinched off, and I'll dress this whole hook shank again. Again, we come back to this peacock. Uh, it's, just a, it's just such a good material. I, I don't know how you could improve on, on peacock. Well, you know, there's a lot of caddis patterns, and mm -hmm. they're all good. Yes, they are. And uh, look at the materials we're using. The, Elk hair wing, the peacock, mm -hmm. and the brown and grizzly mixed, it, just standard stuff. Just, it is. Just but why is it standard? Because it's way. so good. Oh, this, this is a really good yeah. fly. All right. Tie them in by the tips again, like we always do. I'll pull this down, and I'm going to make a little tying rope out of it. Several turns around my tying thread. Now, if you wanted to, you could coat that hook shank with that rubber base glue the yeah. same. Give it just a little time uh, just to a, set up while you're wrapping. Just a little bit while, yeah. where you're doing the peacock. Yeah. And then we'll run this peacock forward. See, a lot of people now with vices that rotate aren't really using them to the fullest potential. Oh, I probably don't uh, use uh, this one that much. But see how nicely you can, you can turn Makes that on. It's a very, very oh, nice, yeah. even body. Yeah. Oh, it's great for spiraling a palmer hackle or doing lots of things. Get rid of that. And you can see there's a couple of those little butt ends back here I left, so I'll just clip them off and nobody will ever know the difference that they were ever there. Well, and the, that's the nice part about making that rope. Yes. Is it binds those down. It won't, won't come, come undone, loose. that's no. right. Now we've got a fairly light piece of elk hair. Again, it would make it a whole lot easier for you to see the fly. Into that hair evener. Get all the tips even that you, as you can. You know, I get a kick out of the way you just one or two gentle taps. Well, a lot of people you see, wang, bang, bang. I remember tying with Polly Rossborough. Oh, mercy. Uh, you know, the old nymph tire, everybody uh, knows about Polly Rossborough, but anybody in the building could hear him tapping. Yeah, <laughs> bang and bang. And, well, I have a, a, a mouse pad, a computer mouse uh -huh. pad under my vise. Uh, Sometimes I think that's probably the best part of a computer, <laughs> but it does really help even that. Well, what I did is I cut a, a square patch out of an old pair of neoprene waders, mm -hmm. and I oh, have yeah. that cemented right on yeah. my tabletop. Mm -hmm. So I just plop on there a couple of times. And bang, it, uh, huh? It's nice if my wife is sleeping and I'm down in the wee hours sure time right. flies. Now I've got the peacock and the brown, I mean the uh, grizzly and the brown tied together. Doesn't matter which one you want to go up with first. And just a few wraps of this coming down. Tie it off. And then when I tie that second hackle, when I start it forward, I always want to take a couple of wraps, or one wrap at least, behind the first wrap of Grizzly I just put on, and then Palmer on through, and then finish it off with a wrap in front Tie it down. Got a couple of fibers captured in there under the thread. Now you asked me at one time, how do I get around that? Mm -hmm. When I pull all that back with my thumbnail, mm -hmm. I can then wrap in front of it and it'll force it right all back sure. in where it used to be or where it needs to be. That has got to be a super fly. Well, that, easy to oh, tie. Easy to tie. Materials are very readily available. Peacock caddis. Nothing more than peacock curl body, elk hair wing, brown and grizzly hackle fibers mixed together. Now, when you're fishing a caddis, do you twitch it at all, or do you I'll, let it drift dead? No, or do you sometimes I'll twitch with it. it. Uh, yes, experiment yeah, with it. Yeah, because the the actual caddis are they're crazy oh, flyers and they when they're coming off, the they, water, yes, 
And, uh, In fact, you can tell when a caddis is hatching because oh, of yeah. the splashy rises. The way the they fish. rise yes. to these things. Yes. And if people would watch the naturals, mm -hmm. then they could make their own flies act the same mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. And we talk about dead drift all the time, but if the bug isn't dead drifting, no. make watch the fly and see work. what the bug is doing. Absolutely. And make yours do the same, whether you're fishing a stone fly or a mayfly or, or whatever. Now, yes. oftentimes, of course, dead drift is the way to go. Oh. With, with but sometimes most it's dries, definitely not either. With most dries and, but I uh, would start this fly off dead drifting. I oh would yeah. cast it upstream, yeah. work it you know, to me. This thing about dead drifting, most of the mayflies are dead drifting. Yes. Uh, when it's talking about mayflies. Yes. And the uh, story I always tell, if tonight when you're eating supper, if you're just about to stick your fork into your uh, mashed potatoes and they scoot across the plate, you'd probably say, well, now, wait a minute. I've been eating mashed potatoes for a lot of years, and I've never seen mashed potatoes <laughs> do that before. I guess I'll try something else. So if you're trying to f fish a dead drift float and you get drag on the fly, mm -hmm. that's unnatural and mm -hmm. the fish won't touch it. But on the other hand, some of these Sometimes. flies, like the caddis or an occasionally a stone fly or a hopper, they're active. And you do, sometimes the harder you can make that fly hit the water. Well, especially with a hopper. Especially with a, a hopper. A heavy hopper, they hear it splash down, they'll, that'll draw mm -hmm. a fish from a long and ways away. You know, away. you could tie this fly even in larger sizes. Oh, sure. And I'll bet you could imitate a hopper with that. Well, you probably could. I mean, granted, and it doesn't have the right material or you wing. You can tie or, it like micro caddis or oh, whatever. Oh, sure, sure. But uh, the point is, observe what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. Don't just see a bunch of bugs out there, but look at the bugs and see how they're acting. Then you give the fish what it wants to see, mm -hmm. where it wants to see it, and acting like the fish expects, to see, expects it to act, mm -hmm. and then you're going to catch fish. Yeah. Gets the majority. Anyway. But it's not a matter of just going out and hitting the water and no. some, hope something no. comes by. No. Give the fish what it wants, sure. Where it wants, that means on top of the water, just in the surface film, where in the water column? Mm -hmm. Under the surface film, down on the bottom. A lot of times the wants, chuck and chance, it just doesn't, doesn't work. Doesn't work. Doesn't what it work. wants, it'll catch just enough fish to keep people going. Mm -hmm. But give it mm -hmm. what it wants, where it wants, and acting the way it mm -hmm. wants it to act. Yes. And uh, when you think about it, that's, that's pretty profound. <laughs> Coming from you, that's very well, profound. <laughs> I used to harp on that to my classes all the time. I mean, that's really a key to catching fish on flies. Well, that's the peacock, peacock uh, caddis. caddis. It'll fly. catch fish for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're going to tie a classic bucktail pattern. Uh, there's nothing unusual about it particularly, except mm -hmm. for one thing, and that's the material you're going to use for the cheeks. Right. Now, I've seen salmon flies tied with this, but mm -hmm. never a standard bucktail. So show us what you're going to use. a different coloration to it. I will use a 6 aught black tying thread. The uh, body material will be silver tinsel. Now this is uh, mylar. It shows gold on one side and silver on the other. We will use the silver. The wing will be the white bucktail. This is the different material you were talking about. This is the golden pheasant. We will use a couple of those uh, tippet feathers. And then the overwing will be the peacock curl. Now I have a size 4 standard streamer hook in the, in the vise. And I'm going to do it this time, Dave, like you normally do it. I know that when you tie your tinsel bodies, you double wrap it. I like to do that. It I gives me a smooth I body and do. it covers up any cracks. Mm -hmm. and, it, uh, and I use a high-speed rotary vise. I can just whip that down and back so fast. And, and well, then I, I usually coat it with head cement sure. uh, and let it dry, tie up a number of bodies to start with. But I'll go ahead. Oh, I guess with that streamer hook, I need a little bit longer go here, don't I? Okay. Then I'll take a wrap to make sure it's coming up right with the silver tinsel. And then I'm just going to go to the rear. And you can see that that just really does lay a nice smooth oh, body yeah. by doing this way. Yeah. And you don't have to go all the way back. I usually go about to the bend. I'll tell you, sometimes yeah. this gets to wrapping so good, you just feel so good, you keep <laughs> going. I usually go to just kind of above the bar, yep, maybe. Yeah, that's where I stop. Maybe a little short of that. And you don't want to go around the bend and make no. it a tag, or it will come loose no. on you. Yes. If the fly, the steel head or whatever, calls for the same body material as the tag, you want to tie the tag in first and tie ones. it off and then do right. the body. Don't try to do it all in one piece. Two different ones. 
Okay, there's the body. It does really come out nice and smooth. It look nice. Then I'll take the bucktail wing. And it's always hard to judge the first fly you tie. How much of this bucktail do you grab to put on? It uh, seems like it's never quite the right amount. It's either too much or not enough. Sometimes I also will try to even the bucktail. I'll try it on this one. Sometimes they'll come out okay. Sometimes they won't. If I can get it all in there. And do a few taps on it. Nope, didn't gonna make any difference with this. Sometimes that bucktail is just Yeah, I I I don't know that I ever try to stack well, I, bucktail. I try it occasionally. I usually try to pull out stray fibers and yep, that's what I'm gonna end up go doing. with that. I'll and at the that. same time it's probably good because this is supposed to represent a fish and when mm -hmm. it comes back it gives it a little taper mm -hmm. rather than having it all nice and straight. Now I didn't get enough in there. I don't yeah, like no. that, Dave. I'm gonna put a little bit more in. That's always the excuse I use for not having it straight. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. But it makes sense if you want a tapered fish shape to it uh -huh. that uh, the end shouldn't be squared off. I'll put just a little bit more in there. Now it all looks like it came out now, the, the same The thing that bunch, people need it? to do when they're tying flies is don't wait till the fly is finished to say, oh, I should have done this. Yeah. Correct the problem when you see it. I do that. If you, I, oh, I do too. But if you see you haven't got enough material or you've got too much or things aren't laying right. you have time to correct it. Correct it now. Yeah. Don't wait until you're done with the fly. I'm going to go ahead. I put some of that rubber-based glue in it. Just make sure this is all bound down nice. And then we'll take these uh, jungle cock fibers. No, or, or tippets, golden I'm, pheasant. No, golden pheasant tippets. Most of the, the flies that use cheeks like this use the... Uh, the jungle cock. And that's why we, we were saying this one is a little bit different in that regard. But this will lay on either side of the wing. I'll put mine in on my side first. A couple of wraps and I'm going to pull it. Notice how he pulls it forward and that tucks it under the mm -hmm. thread just enough to make the cheek lay flat. You don't want that cheek out away from the wing. You want it lying down right flush against it. And that's how you do it. Just a couple of turns of thread, then pull it slightly forward, then bind it down good with thread. And I'll turn this one around and get them about the same length if I can. A little bit. Mm -hmm. I'll leave a little there so I can pull it through mm -hmm. and make sure that it does. You know, that's a nice looking fly. It really is. When I saw the picture of it, I just knew that this would be yeah. a, just a good all-round fly. Now, this fly also has an option that you could put... Uh, eyes on it if you would like. Well, you could put lead eyes. Sure could. Or you could put bead chain eyes. If I was going to put lead eyes, though, I would do it, tie the fly differently because yeah. that lead eye would make that ride upside down right. in the water. Right. And then I'll just take a few strands of peacock. I like bead chain eyes. Yeah. And I've found that rather than cut the pair of eyes off the bead chain, I take the end of the chain and bind it on the hook so there's well, one then, eye on each side. Yeah. Then I cut it then off. Then cut it. Mm -hmm. And it's much easier to handle. Now we'll just lay some of this peacock curl on top. I'll have it about the same length as the uh, white bucktail was. Now you can see that I've left an awful lot of room here. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is if I want the option of tying the eyes on, I can yeah. do that at this point. Well, and you the big enough head, you could put the stick on eyes sure and could. then wrap it with the clear mm -hmm. thread like you, mm -hmm. we did on a previous show. But you, you can always remember, too, that minnows have that big black head. Oh, absolutely. And uh, that's a very, very impressionistic no, fly. I don't object at all to uh, a big head on a streamer. <clears throat> no. Now, this one, I cut the tips off of that uh, peacock curl. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the peacock curl that I have there, some of the tips are broken off. Is the reason I did it. Yeah. I would probably want to tie it so that the peacock tip eyes or the uh, hurl ends uh -huh. were the regular tip rather than trimming them off I, I blunt. I think so. But that won't make any difference. No. I can assure you it will no. not. But it that's does. just a good all-round looking all around fly. streamer fly. You maybe wouldn't even need that much peacock. Might not. Might not. Just you want some of that off? Well, no. doesn't matter. Okay. But you understand it'll be like a regular minnow with a dark sure. back and sure. lighter sides. And, uh, no, I think, I think that's the a... The golden tippet could be the... Uh, yeah. Uh, 
the gills could be any no, number it, of things. It looks fine. Some, yeah, it's got that really little does. flash of color. So there's the uh, the moose crick uh, bucktail. Has the silver tinsel body. Has the white bucktail over wing. It has the golden pheasant tip at cheeks, and the peacock curl over wing. No, I don't know where that flight came from. I, I don't, don't know either. where Moose River is. I don't know who don't first either. tied it. Uh, but, but it will fly use it anywhere, oh, east absolutely. or west. That should be a that good tie. Yep. All right, now we're going to tie a panfish fly, a very simple fly using only a couple simple. of materials. It's called the sinking spider, and it would be good for well any kind of panfish. Sure. I guess that's probably what they call it, a panfish fly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are we going to use? And you know, it might even work for some bass in some ponds too. Well, I too. suppose it, it would you know, if you tie it bigger. Bigger sizes. Yeah. The only thing we're going to use is a 6 aught chartreuse tying thread. The body is again this easy dub. It's also chartreuse. And then the, the legs material will be the white uh, round rubber legs. And you could use chartreuse rubber legs or orange sure rubber can. legs or black rubber legs uh -huh. or you could use any color body, uh, you know. I have a, a, bit. a 2x long hook, size 10. I'll put it in the vise. That's a heavy wire sinking. Heavy wire, yep. Mm -hmm. Wet fly hook. <clears throat> and you're right, this is going to be an extremely simple fly. Well, tie slowly so we tie don't have slow. to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll dress the tying thread, or tying dress thread the hook around with the, the tying thread. Yes, there, there you go. There you are. Then we'll take some of this easy dub. I want to lay that the full length of the shank of the hook, mm -hmm. or almost the full length, yep. because what that will do is give it a, an even, more even body. Yep. And give it a little come forward on bulkier it. body. Mm -hmm. And then just wrap forward, just exactly like we've done with it in the past. This is nice stuff to work oh, with. It, it, it really it is. is. Yeah. Now, if you don't have the easy dub, just any dubbing material will work. I or think. Or on this fly, I'd, I'd use yellow yarn, wool. Yarn, sure. Any or kind of yarn. Or you could use chenille. Now, I'm going to whip finish the fly up here on the end, even though I don't have the rubber legs on yet. I was going to say, hey, you forgot some. No, then oh, I'll come back here yeah. to the middle. I know it. And tie that thread in again. And, and this is why it's nice to have the matching. Uh, I want to whip finish that there just to be sure it's going to stay. This they, is, they really do match well. Yes, they do. Now, a lot of people have trouble with the rubber legs, trying to strip them apart, get them mm -hmm. set. All you got to do is hang on to it and then pull. Mm -hmm. They'll pretty well pop mm -hmm. apart. Well, you showed me that trick too because I was down and all was down there with the dubbing oh, needle. No, if you just pull on them just and pop them, them, they'll, they'll mm -hmm. come right off. Now we'll tie. A figure X, or a figure X, yeah, an X here. He's make a good figure skater. Let's see a figure X. <laughs> yeah, a figure X. Then I'll tie one more on, and I don't care what the length is at this point. doesn't matter. You know, talk about figure skating. I was always good at a figure I. Yeah, I could right. do the I, and then I'd dot it by falling. Uh -huh, by falling down. <laughs> I'm going to try to separate that one little guy there a little more. And there's really not any reason to take a whole lot of time tying this fly at all. Now I'm going to stand them all up together, yeah. and I don't want to pull on them. No. Otherwise, you'll distort the length. Yeah. I like to leave them long enough so they will yeah, wiggle. Yeah, I do too. Uh, and I'd rather I cut them myself, too long. Yeah, sometimes I find myself cutting legs. Uh -huh. So they end up being stiff, too short. Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, on the floating flies, too, you want those legs to sit out there and quiver. Little little bluegill poppers. Oh, yeah. oh absolutely. Yeah. Boy, that would be a good, good panfish fly. Uh, Gee, you know, man. You've got uh, just basically four legs, two on each four side. Four legs, yeah. two on each side. Mm -hmm. Got them trimmed off pretty close to the same length. Mm -hmm. But turning that around, you can see how that thing's just going to work. Mm -hmm. And and it won't, you know, I wonder if you weight this fly. What would you do? Well, I, I would tie them both weighted and unweighted. Could. Uh, I think if I were going to tie one weighted, I would probably tie it with a different colored head so yeah. that I knew that it, that particular fly oh, was yeah. weighted. Yeah. 
Otherwise, you're out there trying to do a balancing and act, figure, which yeah. one weighed and which one's not. And then I'll put head seam in on both the front where I fin yeah. what finished it and in the center. Well, you've got to be a little careful. Uh, sometimes I'll try to set things with that uh, rubber-based cement, mm -hmm. and you don't want to get it on these legs or they'll curl. Yeah, they will. And they'll bend the, up and the it's kind acetone of a solid, and it, yeah. yeah. Or the toluene, I mean, So does you that. want to keep that away from the rubber yeah. legs. But there's a little sinking spider for panfish. Nothing more than, than the easy dub thread. And you can make that whatever color you oh, yeah. wanted, just have the thread well, match it. We're talking about sinking flies. Mm -hmm. And for panfish, you'd probably be fishing in still water. Let's talk a little bit about sinking lines in still water. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes people use a floating line with a long leader. Sometimes they tie some lead core into the leader. Sometimes you want a sinking tip line or a full sinking line or fast or slow. Or uh, my favorite float tubing line now is what they call the slime line. Mm -hmm. It's sold as a still water line. It's clear, clear intermediate, and uh, sinks uh, at a moderate speed. Mm -hmm. Depends and, on which uh, lake I'm fishing though. Yeah. Shallow lakes, I would definitely fish that slime line. Yep. There are some lakes around here that I want to sink six. Yep. I might be down 30 feet maybe mm -hmm. if I go slow enough with it. Basically, you're matching the line yes. to the water. Yes. Yeah. And also, you want to be very careful of how long a leader is. How long the leader is. And this is really important because if the leader is too long, mm -hmm. the line will sink, but the fly will be riding up Way here. Up high. And whenever I use a sinking, almost whenever I use a sinking line, I shorten that leader up mm -hmm. to maybe mm -hmm. 18 inches or two feet. Yeah, I tie I'll, a butt I'll, section on the line and I tip, tip it onto it. that. Two to three feet is yeah. usually what I say. A perfect example is, uh, well, just about a year ago, there was a group of us fishing a lake up in uh, Washington, the state of Washington, mm -hmm. and uh, we were fishing a fly that we'll be tying on a uh, show here before long. But we were, the three of us, Two of, we were all fishing the same fly, basically. We were kicking back and forth along a weed bed. We all had this still water line on, mm -hmm. and I was catching, by actual count, at least six to one oh, really? of the other two guys. <laughs> and we couldn't figure out why. We were in the same water. Same fly? Same basic fly, everything. Wow. And uh, I knew I wasn't a better fisherman, but I was getting mm -hmm. by really six to mm -hmm. one. Well, after we were done, I said, well, what leader were you guys using? Oh, seven and a half, nine feet. Oh, well, I had an 18 inch leader. Sure. So I was down just over the top At of the weeds where the, where the fish were, were right. and they were right. up above and it paid off. Now there could be times that you would want that sinking line Absolutely. with a long leader because then the, the line is down in the weeds, but the, the fly, fly is, is gonna be yep, up above. Absolutely. Yes, that would also That's work a trick I well. learned from a Klamath mm -hmm. Indian over in Oregon, oh, yeah. fishing on the Williamson. Well, hey, there's that sinking spider. Let's go over it one more time. Yeah. All we have is the easy dub body, the matching thread, and the round rubber legs. Well, now, can you remember what we started with in this show? We started with the peacock caddis. Peacock caddis. Then we tied the moose river, moose bucktail, river bucktail. And now the, and now sinking, the sinking spider. spider. Mm -hmm. Well, again, we hope we've provided you with some uh, ideas of new things to try, some new patterns to tie, mm -hmm. and uh, Good grief, let's tie some flies and go fishing. All we'll right, see you in I'm another ready. week. Okay. Have a good week. Dave and Leroy have produced two 100-minute videos covering basic trout fly selection and tying for the Western and Eastern United States. For basic Western and Eastern flies videos, call 1-800-883-0124 or visit our website at publictelevision.org. Cost of each video is $16.95 or get both for just $31.95 plus shipping and handling. You can also order the programs from this series. Each videotape includes three programs for just $22.95 plus shipping and handling. To order, call 1-800-883-0124 or visit us at our website, publictelevision.org.
For more information on this series, please visit our website, publictelevision.org.